Hello, hi everybody, hi Yins, how you doing? Um, Bakelite, Bakelite, what is Bakelite? Bakelite, hmm, back in, what, 1907, Leo Bakelin, um, he invented the first synthetic plastic, Bakelite. Yep, was he trying to do that? No, of course not. He actually was trying to create shellac, shellac. What is shellac? Of course you know what that is. But do you know that shellac actually comes from an insect? So you can imagine how long it would take to get shellac. So he was trying to invent shellac insect. Yeah, kind of like when I say, honey, honey. And guess what he does? Honey bee shit. Well, yeah, yep, honey bee shit, uh, silk. Spiders, all these. I don't know any about. I don't. I really don't know about those things, insects and stuff. But I know a little bit about bakelite. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to show you maybe a little bit of how you can tell if it's authentic or not, because there's reproductions, and show you a little bit of what you can do to find that out. I'll show you some pictures, what some items might be worth. So you, hopefully, you can find some of those items and make some money 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 stay tuned okay hey, in case i didn't tell you hello nanotin treasures here now for bakelite there are some tests half a dozen tests you can do find out if it's authentic if it's true or not but let me tell you i'm not going to show you all of them I'm just going to go through and tell you some. One of the things you can do is rub it in your hands. Put it under warm water. 20, 30 seconds. Smell it. Smell it. Smell it. It's supposed to smell like formaldehyde. I don't know what formaldehyde smells like. What does formaldehyde smell like? I don't know. They put it in shampoo. They put it in soap. They're trying to bomb us while we're alive. Formaldehyde. So, but... How about paint thinner, varnish, chemical? Same thing. Smells like that. It's probably Bakelite. That's one way. Now, another way you might be able to tell is color. Coloring. Now I got from my son. He was going to burn a dresser. I saw the handles on the dresser. That's Bakelite handles. Give me the handles. I got all the handles. So, with the handles, the sunshine, uh, skin, lotion, whatever elements out there, changes the patina. Patina, just the coloring, another word for coloring, on the Bakelite. So, if you're looking, usually that way that would work. The sunlight, whatever, gets on the top. So the patina, the top of that would be darker. It makes it turn darker. The underside, say it's earrings. The back side of the earrings are going to be lighter than the top of pin. The underside, lighter. The top will get darker. That comes from the patina with age. And let me show you an example of these handles. This is the top. That's the bottom where the screws go in. So you can see the difference changing. Dark, light. So that's another way you can tell. Um, there's also some different applications you can put on. One is scrubbing bubbles. Scrubbing bubbles will work, but you probably don't want to use scrubbing bubbles. If you do that, it can dull the surface. If the surface is really shiny, wherever you might do it, it might dull that. So you probably don't want to do that. There's a, another um, chemical out there, Simichrome, which that, that actually I think works pretty good on Pyrex too, but that's altogether something different. The Simichrome, that there might leave the tested area too shiny. You know, maybe it's something dull, kind of dull. You don't want it to be shiny in one spot when you test. Um, so that's another thing you can do. The best thing I think, do it doesn't change it at all, is good old 409. 409, spray it on, and it should work. Now I have a couple items here that I did test. I got these earrings, these here, earrings in a lot auction, which I did a video on that. I can link that up above, but 
They may look like Bakelite. You can hear that kind of bland, not real. So how about these? Here's the coloring. See what happens? It's dark on the top. Look what happened. Turn now. These are two different pieces. Just kidding you. Hear that? It's a little bit more clean, but this is a really good test. Hear that clunk? Bake like clunk. Really good clunk. It is not going to sound. And the reason is the weight. These are very light. Bakelite is heavier. It's heavier in weight. So it'll have more of a clunking sound. So that's how you can tell whether, for the most part, if it's Bakelite or not. Using the 409 test, what it'll do when you put it, spray it, get a little Q-tip swab, cotton ball, rub it in, and the end of that, it should turn like a, a pale yellow, kind of white, orange. Now the only problem might come up with is the colors. And there again, the colors. The colors, basic colors are always the black, the brown, red, yellow, green, blue, gray, and there's some blends, marbling, when you put the colors together, kind of like marbling. So, <clears throat> if you uh, do the Q-tip and it comes out orange, yellow, pale, col colors like that, the only difference would be if it's the black or the red. Those can be a little tricky. That doesn't always work with those colors. Um, so let me show you. I'm just going to do the 409 and I'll show you a little bit of how that works. So I'm just going to spray it like that. See, you want to get some on your Q-tip and you run through it. Oh no, you don't run through it. That's a type of perfume on or cologne, another thing. So once it's on there, see, and you can tell that's white. Nothing is on it. Okay, let me take one of these. You can see, I'm just gonna rub that. If it stops moving around here, just give it a little bit of a rub. Yeah, see that? Now, that's all clean. You may say, well, maybe that was just dirty, okay? Let me show you. I'm not changing. Just get a little bit more on there. The clean one. Clean. You see I haven't changed. It's kind of hard to rub. But just a little bit. And there you have it. That yellow, orangey. That's, it's not because of this color. It will turn that, whether it's green, yellow, whatever the baker like color may be. Now on the same, the brown. Brown. Get that on there. Rub it. Do a little bit on the sides. Now that's a little bit. Not a whole lot. But I did clean these real good before I started. So you can see. That's those. Now I have a button here. Black, white, marble looking. That looks like that could be Bakelite. Whoa, could be. Do another swab test. Both sides, rub it. Mm. Nope, that's not Bakelite. How about these earrings, just to be sure. Rub it. Rub, rub, three men in a tub, and there's nothing. So that definitely is not Bakelite. Now, the reason why I have, 
Well, before I go to that, I have this telephone. Some of these were Bakelite. They were Bakelite. This one, I don't, I don't think it is. I'm going to have to do more research just to be sure. I'm guessing this is about 1967. It's ringing. That would be my guess. And um, the Bakelite on the phones, they pretty much stopped doing Bakelite. Uh, end of the 50s, maybe up to 1962. That would have been about the latest. So I, I'm, I'm going to test this. We'll see. We'll see. So we'll spray that. Now, I'm going to use a cotton ball. Rub it. Could be dirt. I'll do it again. I truly do not think this is Bakelite. It's a clean, clean cotton ball. Same spot. Rub it, rub it, rub it hard. Sometimes it takes a while. Hmm. That's pretty much white. So yeah, I really, I'm saying no. This is not Bakelite. But it's a nice phone, vintage phone. Might still get 20, 30 bucks for it. Out there, for, for those youngsters out there, this is a telephone. Yes, it is. And this is how it would work. You pick up the phone, you hear a dial tone. You, to, to call somebody, dial one, eight, one, six. And then the phone number and whatever it would be. Usually if you want a long distance, you do the one, the area code, and the phone number. If it wasn't long distance, you just did the phone number. Um, <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you the age. Also on these phones. How many out there remember you could pick it up to make a call? You hear somebody talking. You know why? Because back in the day, they used to have what was called party lines. And depending on what you could afford, you could have a private line, but that was very expensive. Or you may have a two-party, three-party. I don't know if there was four, but party lines. And that means you shared a line with your neighbor across the street, next door, down the road. You don't know. So you could pick up the phone. You hear somebody talk, and that means they're on your line. So guess what? You got to hang up. I wonder how many people sat and listened. I don't know. Probably one or two anyways, or you could get really mad and say, hey, I need to use the phone. Get off the line, please. So yeah, that was back then. Oh boy, how many people knew that? Let me hear that. So that's a little bit about how you can tell whether or not it's really authentic. Use the cotton swab and the colors. Another way you can tell, you see the hardware on here? That hardware, it's going to be a little bit rusty, tarnished, obviously. So it's never glued onto Bakelite. They never used glue. So you can tell by the tarnishing of it, rusted. And there would always be, instead of glue, little pins or little tiny nails, tiny little screws, but they were never glued. So let's get into a little bit about what do you have, if you do have something, what it might um, be valued at, make some money. Let's look at some things. I did a video of a um, massager. I'll put that up here. Got that for free. It was actually through my grands on him and I go through the storage shed. It's, it's a beautiful piece. It definitely is. Now, a lot of resellers go out to Goodwill, thrifting, wherever they go, and I see this. Not a lot, but I've seen it already before. When they're out and they go through and they just pass this right up. Pass it up. It's this. Now this is 
a backgammon game. This is like brand new, so this was a good find. I got this at um, Salvation Army, paid $4.99. I've already sold one, um, $125. I sold a second one, I think it was about $85. I, don't, I haven't got this one up yet. don't know what it's going to go for. This is not dated. It does not have a date, but it does say printed in Taiwan. So I know it's old. And I know I did the test that these are Bakelite chips. So even if you just found the chips and not the full game, this is the full game. It has these. On the full game, it has two white dice, two broad dice, and a bigger dice. That you, Well, I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. I used to play it all the time, but that's all the pieces and all the parts, and it's in beautiful condition. This is easy, $100. And like I said, I've seen this on videos, watching resellers out there. Please pick these up. They're usually pretty cheap. Probably wouldn't spend more than $10. Even if you spent that, you could at least get $80 for something. This, this is a lot of, you could get it. Something, something to look forward to, something to look for. And this here, like I said, the rotary dial, this is, I think is 1967, but 1931, I know that would have been a Bakelite. So look on the back and see if you find the dates. I'm pretty sure that's the date, 67. And uh, like I said, they kind of stopped using Bakelite, 1950s, 1962. So another thing to look for, buttons, earrings, hardware, games. On the... Uh, Side of the game is probably about 1930. There's one. I'll show you this one. Yeah. This is a marbled poker. It's poker, poker caddy with chips. Now, if you just found a caddy, don't pass it up. Pick it up. The caddy alone can be worth $50 to $150. Now, the caddy with the chips, $250, $375 80. That's, that's a beautiful set. Really pretty set. Uh, dominoes. Chessmen, all of those items back in the 30s, 40s, they were all made with Bakelite. So you just you really want to watch that. In the 20s, that's the, probably about the beginning, which I wish I had some jewelry, some real bit. If you see the bangles, they're very pretty. The oranges, yellows, greens, reds, and some of them marbled a little bit. Those guarantee are all Bakelite. And do the test. Find two of them. That's what it'll sound like. The bangles. It'll be a little clunk, 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 clunk sound. So you definitely want to look out for that. A lot of odd items. Socket base for light bulbs. Saxophone mouthpieces. Musical. Musical stuff sells good anyways. It don't matter. But the mouthpiece of a saxophone. Absolutely. Handgun stocks. Handguns. Knives. Some nice handles, letter openers. That's a that's a big one. Letter openers. Uh, they're they're very sought off. This hinged bracelet uh, it was for two hundred and fifty dollars. The value of that now, from nineteen eighty four when it sold for two hundred and fifty dollars, has increased to four thousand. You could probably about four thousand for that today. That same bracelet. Um, also, back in the mid nineties. There were so many bangle bracelets, pins that you wear. Women used to wear pins all the time, even up in here. Um, 10 to 50 bucks back in the 90s. Today value, oh, $5,275, easy. Now, with the Bakelite, um, it was made, like I said, formaldehyde and phenol. Those were two ingredients that he accidentally come across and made them, but are the, is Bakelite made today? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, even though it is made today, and it's kind of hard to tell, but I can guarantee if you do the test with the 409, you'll know for sure if it's vintage or not. It, but it is made today with other chemicals. So, yes, just be on the lookout and be aware. Back then, Bakelite was known as thousands of uses, so you could, it was in, it was, Put in a lot of things. A lot of things were made from it. Oh, do you notice my shirt? I want to bring that up. Froggy flips. Thrifting. Thrifting ain't easy. I can flip. It's not easy for me to flip. But Froggy flips. Good reseller. 
as a YouTube. I'll link his uh, channel down below. Go get yourself a t-shirt. It's good quality. Very nice. He does resale. He does videos. He's funny. Great guy. Check him out. And if you like, see that subscribe button down there? Appreciate that if you subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, if you are, thank you. Appreciate it very much. Share. You see that share button? Share this. Friends, family, share it if you like what you see. Hit that little bell. Ding, ding, ding. Make it ring. Then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. What I'm going to try to do is more informational videos like this. Because I'm realizing I'm old and I'm assuming everybody knows about what I know. But I'm thinking now, no, that's not the case because I'm seeing a lot of questions. What is this? What is that? What is Hobnail? What is Fenton? What is Nippon? What is Chippendale? What is blah, blah, blah. So you know what? I'm going to try and do at least one video a week. I'm going to pick a subject, some kind of glassware. I know there's a lot of Pyrex. Pyrex is my favorite. I love Pyrex. Um, but Hobnail, Milk Glass, Fenton, Japan, Made in Japan. Wedgwood, uh, the list goes on and on. American glass, anchor glass, it's, it's forever. So um, I don't know a lot. I know a little bit about a few things. Actually, I, I don't know everything. I just know some things. Um, but I'm going to give you my information, what I know. And I'm hoping it helps you out. I hope that you can get a little bit from it. Be on the lookout uh, if you spot anything. Uh, you'll maybe know, oh, ooh, that could be worth some money, 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 money. So let's pick it up. Let's get it sold. So thank you so much. Appreciate y'all. Bye.